Hi everyone, Shane Armand Rowe here. It was mentioned in the previous video's comments that if you have a 1571, you do not need a parallel adapter because the serial cable is enough. So I wanted to talk about this for just a little bit. This new service request line is basically a burst mode that allows the 1571 to be read fast enough by the PC to avoid having to use a parallel cable. And since people mentioned kindly that I did not show my rips after the last video in use, we're going to rip Ghostbusters using the 1571. You can see here that it's sending over the SRQ support code. This is what allows us to get away with this without using the parallel port cable. Since Ghostbusters required that we did a patch with it after we did a regular copy, we're going to try to do this complete duplication here again, and I'm gonna bring receipts this time. We're gonna take the Ghostbusters dump that I just did and bring it directly over using FTP over to the Commodore 64U, where we'll actually demonstrate we don't have to patch it in order to make it work. Once it's moved over, now we can load it here on the C64U. No cuts, no transitions, we're just gonna leave it as it is. So the entire concept that we're talking about here with regards to the parallel cable is that we need to be able to read the disk fast enough where we never have to buffer any of the data. The 1541 only has a small amount of RAM, which means if you need to copy a whole track, there's not enough room in there to hold it. So that's why we need something like this parallel cable if we want to um, do these higher levels of copy protection. The 1571 has the burst mode, so you either need the parallel or you need the 1571 for true uh, ripping prowess. Now, I've got a loader line at the bottom for those of you who want to skip ahead. But uh, yeah, so it's really not a big secret. The speed of the read and the committal of the data on the PC is what really gives us the opportunity to copy these oddball things. But there are still some other types of copy protection that even with this sort of speed, where we're not worrying about how to copy an entire track at once, there is another piece to that equation, and Arkanoid is the perfect choice for us to look at. So this is gonna finish up here in just a moment. I want you to see that it works without any sort of patching or nonsense. There we go, it works a treat. Now let's talk about Arkanoid, the nasty, ugly duckling in the room. VMAX 3.0 is a protection scheme that actually counts on the sort of inaccuracy of the 1541 drive, a wobble effect, if you will. It's worth reading up on if you're curious. We're gonna use this remaster tool, though, to basically realign the, uh, the uh, sync so that it works well with the C64U, as well as patch out the cartridge detection. So yeah, we're sort of patching, even though we've got this hardware. We're gonna set it up for true 300 RPM, make sure that's checked there, and then we're gonna hit the patch of the cartridge check, make sure you do that one last. And there you go. Now we're gonna export it to another uh, copy. I've already exported it, this is release seven. This is how many times I went through this to try to figure it out, it's a real pain. But it's very rare, these VMAX 3s. Now I'm going to copy it over via FTP, and we're going to launch it. I have links to all this stuff in the description below, by the way. Yeah, so I spent a lot of time trying to get Arkanoid to behave, and uh, as you can see with all the different versions. But I did eventually crack the code, so to speak, figuratively and literally in this case. So the fact that it starts loading means it's passed the first check. And the second check is that it actually loaded to one of these screens. All right, move along. Now, when it gets to the Arkanoid screen, the actual sort of like, this is really sort of a loading screen itself. If it didn't immediately reset, it passed the cartridge check. So at this point, we should be good to go. And... There she is, the copy's successful at this point. And I'll go ahead and boot it so you can see that it does indeed work. So yeah, obviously it's not a 100% surefire way to copy stuff, but 99% of the time, being able to use that zoom floppy with parallel or 1571 does the trick. 
Sometimes with VMAX, you got to get a little heavier handed. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Shane R. Monroe. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, hype, you know what to do. Take care. We'll see you next time.